This is the video lecture for microbiology for Tuesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, this is the first video lecture in a series of two. In this first video lecture, what I'm going to do is just finish chapter 18 for now. And then we will move on uh, from this point to, uh, let's see, I believe chapter 21 or 23. I can't remember, but we were going to skip around, remember? And so anyhow, all of the lecture notes are posted on Moodle. And there will be a video lab uh, that will be posted on my YouTube channel. Look for that uh, late tomorrow. And what I'll do is I'll demonstrate the inoculation for the lab tomorrow, and then I will demonstrate the results of the lab on Friday. Uh, these are for labs 22 and 23, and then you'll go ahead and fill those out in your book. Um, for lab 18, we will do critical thinking and clinical applications. Uh, for lab 18, on the Wednesday video lecture, and then on Friday, you need to turn them in electronically by scanning them or by taking pictures of each of the individual pages. And so make sure that you do that. I'll also send out a Moodle reminder for all this. It's a lot to take in. I hope everybody's doing well um, in light of this um, uh, significant uh, disadvantage that we've put you in, and uh, I wish there was some way around it, but I, like I said, I hope you're all doing super well. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the eye. We, part of this, this chapter was on infectious diseases of the eye, and so we need to look at the different portions of the eye. This hits home for me because I just had a cataract removed and a lens replaced, and so, um, to just run down the surface of the eyeball is called the sclera, okay? That's sort of the bluish white surface. Um, the part of the eye that gives color is the iris. And then of course there's a lens. The lens is flexible and it is held by uh, two groups of muscles on the top and the bottom. Covering the lens and the iris is the cornea, which is a tougher, more rigid, protective surface. And then the anterior chamber is in front of the iris. The posterior chamber is behind the iris. And then you have a layer of tissue called the conjunctiva that's below your eyelids, uh, both top and bottom. And that's where you get conjunctivitis or pink eye, okay? In the back of the eye is the retina. And that is where the lens takes the image and the image is projected onto the retina, which is covered with cone and rod cells, which process the information into an image and send it up the optic nerve. Um, in the middle is a vitreous chamber. It does have sort of a vitreous or uh, vitreous refers to glassy characteristic. And um, the vitreous material can congeal. That's when you get floaters in your eyes. And unfortunately, the older you get, the more floaters you get, and they just congeal. And, you know, if you look right, you probably can see some floaters uh, in your eye at any point in time, especially looking under a microscope. Uh, below, this just shows the eyelid. It shows the pupil, which the pupil allows the amount of light in and it protects the eyes to make sure that not enough, that sufficient light comes in, but not too much to damage the retina. So the pupil will constrict and dilate, okay? And then you see the white portion of the eye, which is the sclera, and the colored portion of the eye, which is the iris. Okay, and in terms of um, architecture for flushing away microbes and uh, producing things like tears, you have the lacrimal gland that is located to the upper outside of your eye. And then you have the superior and inferior uh, uh, canalicula, and those will drain off tears. 
uh, lacrimal sac, uh, nasal lacrimal duct, and that will um, drain off a lot of tears into your sinuses. Okay. And the tear film in your eyes is really, really important. It um, has water in it. It also has an oily phase. And of course, mucus, it's part of your mucous membranes. Uh, and, and this flushes away microorganisms in your eyes, prevents the attachment, it's very, very effective. Um, the aqueous portion contains sugars. Uh, lysozyme, just like in your spit, lysozyme breaks down peptidoglycan for bacterial invaders. And then lactoferrin, which uh, is able to transfer iron and also sequester iron that keeps the iron from the microbes and causes them to die. Okay, the mucus layer also has some protective proteins as well as polysaccharides. Okay, and in the eyes, uh, you just you don't have much of an innate immune response. If you had neutrophils, uh, macrophages and a lot of the cells in the innate immune system are the second line of defense, then you would always have cloudy vision because that, you know, these, these invaders would protect you, but they would also float across your, um, uh, your retina and that would block vision. Okay. And then the anterior chamber of the eye is closed off from the bloodstream. So uh, there's not a whole lot of ways for immune cells to get in there, okay? And then you do have T cells in the anterior chamber because it is um, connected to the lymphatic system, but they're generally less active, okay? Uh, believe it or not, there are microbes in your eye. Um, but about 20% of individuals, when you culture uh, uh, fluid from their eye, you see no bacteria. So it's essentially sterile or you don't, there may be bacteria, but it's just not culturable. Uh, you have staph epidermitis, which is pretty common uh, on your skin as well, micrococcus, some streptococcus and Cornier bacterium, uh, not the one that causes diphtheria though. Okay, and the first disease that we're going to talk about is pink eye or conjunctivitis. And this is uh, very, very contagious. And it uh, usually it's self-limiting because uh, individuals that have pink eye are excluded from class activities. Um, you don't see it as much in adults. You see it more in children because children are uh, have a lifestyle that's much more communicable. They're touching each other and they may not have good hand washing practices. So it spreads from person to person. Uh, the viral infection, um, there's a viral portion of this and there's also a bacterial type of this as well. The viral infection produces a clear exudate. So it's colorless and it's translucent. Bacterial infections, produce a milky exudate. So you look at the difference of those and you can do a rough differential diagnosis and say, is this pink eye viral or is it bacterial? Okay, redness uh, of the eyes is a characteristic and eyelid swelling is also common. Um, in terms of neonatal with uh, just uh, right after birth, you can get contamination in the birth canal if the mom has diarrhea or chlamydia or, uh, 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 excuse me, chlamydia. And then um, other age groups, it's very common because Staph aureus is very co common as well. Same with Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza and Marcella species, but probably Staph and Strep are the most common. Okay, viral, uh, it's just a different type of adenovirus. Uh, there are a few others. Um, usually the, you, when, when you have a viral diagnosis, you don't necessarily identify the virus as causing pink eye because it's so common and there are many, many different adenoviruses that cause it and that's not going to affect the treatment course. Highly transmissible, so contact you know, with individuals who have pink eye, they rub their eyes, they shake their hands, they put their hands on surfaces, so it's really, really easy to transmit. Okay, 
And here is a bacterial pink eye. You can see that the exudate is not clear. It's not translucent. It's opaque. Okay. And here's somebody that has more of a viral pink eye. And you can see there's a lot of liquid. There's a lot of tears forming in order to flush away the virus. But the exudate is clear and it's not uh, as profoundly mucousy. Okay. So to treat and prevent uh, pink eye, the best prevention is just good hygiene and uh, common, uh, you know, frequent hand washing because it can trans transfer from uh, eye to hand and somebody else's hand or a doorknob or whatever. So frequent hand washing is very good. Um, in newborns, when they do know that the mom is uh, infected with some type of bacterial disease in the birth canal, then they'll give oral and topical antibiotics. Um, for clostridia, or, I'm sorry, for chlamydia trachomatis, uh, trachomatis, excuse me, they use erythromycin for gonorrhea, uh, uh, ceftrioxone, and then oral and topical treatments could be cipro, erythromycin, and gentamicin. Okay, and here's our little cheat sheet from your book for uh, pink eye. And you can see that um, for viral, there really is no type of treatment. So you just let it run its course, okay? Uh, it does not last long. It may last um, for the better part of a week, but that's really about it. And um, for bacterial, uh, in, in, it's not in the newborn, it's just a clinical diagnosis. There's no re need reason to run a culture. You can see the exudate is cloudy and uh, purulent, has a lot of pus in it. And so you just give an antibiotic. Viral conjunctivitis happens to be more common in adults and bacterial conjunctivitis is more common in children. Trachoma is another infection. This is a chronic infection of chlamydia trachomatis uh, in the epithelial cells of the eye, okay? And so again, fingers that have chlamydia on them, uh, fomites, uh, doorknobs, surfaces, phones, and then also fleas can transmit chlamydia as well. Uh, this has a mild discharge and inflammation, and then inf lymphocytes and macrophages come into the infected area, which, you know, is not a normal process in the eye. And then you get sort of a membrane, a pseudomembrane that forms over the cornea, and when that does form over the cornea, it blocks vision, okay? And if not treated properly, it's chlamydia, so it's bacterial. So you can use antibiotics, then it, but if it's not treated, it can lead to corneal damage and impaired vision, okay? This is azithromycin, which attacks nucleic acids, okay? And this is a type of trachoma. You can see that it's got that pseudomembrane that's covering, um, in this point, the uh, a very, very large uh, colored portion of the eye. And that pseudomembrane, uh, when it covers the cornea, can cause damage. This is a more extensive case of trachoma, and um, but it, it, the pseudomembrane won't persist, so this will clear up. Okay. Indirect contact and uh, mechanical vector, like a flea, is um, the typical mode of transmission. Uh, virulence factors, it grows inside the cells, okay? Uh, and you look at stained preparations and you look for inclusion bodies um, in, the, uh, in the particular bacteria, okay? You prevent by um, making sure that, you know, if there's infestations of fleas, you get rid of them. Um, you want to make sure that, like, a, if you have a pink eye, a conjunctivitis that's caused by chlamydia, that you get it treated very, very quickly so it doesn't lead to trachoma. 
and then treatment, like I said, azithromycin or erythromycin. And it's you see it um, in children because of uh, higher levels of transmission and poor hygiene practices. And so, and it can be very, very prevalent, uh, especially in areas that don't have access to as much healthcare. Okay, keratitis is another disease, is uh, more serious than conjunctivitis or pink eye, okay? And any type of microorganism can cause this infection, especially after the eye has some type of trauma. Trauma uh, provides access to the interior, the anterior space uh, behind the cornea, okay? Um, and this, is usually caused by herpes, okay? And herpes does not require trauma. Okay, so herpes simplex one can travel uh, from the oral nasal cap cavity to the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, and that goes directly to the eye, okay? And that is the leading cause of blindness in the US. You don't hear as much about it, uh, it's not as, uh, well known, it is uh, indeed treatable. Okay. Uh, you also can get amoeba in your eye. Acanth amoeba uh, is something that is uh, typical, and you know, and and it doesn't typically grow in contact lens solution, but it can. Okay. And so, if you have poor contact lens hygiene or some type of trauma then that is a warning sign. If you have trauma to the eye, you may get um, a prophylactic antibiotic from your uh, ophthalmologist. Okay, here, this is more cloudy. And you can see the impairment of the vision. Okay. Uh, the top is herpes simplex. The bottom is acanthamoeba. Okay. And you can see uh, the difference between the two, uh, both herpes simplex as well as bacterial or uh, protozoa in the case of acanthamoeba. Um, in terms of the virulence factors, herpes simplex can lie latent uh, in nervous tissue, okay? And when that happens, then you may get a viral culture confirmed by a PCR like they're doing with uh, COVID-19 right now. Uh, you can't prevent, okay, so if it happens, then you need to treat uh, with topical and oral uh, antivirals, okay. And so one third of the population worldwide is infected with herpes simplex one. This is just one of the outcomes of a herpes simplex one infection. Okay, so you can see where this would be quite prevalent. Um, and in terms of treatment of bacterial and uh, protozoa, then you just use antimicrobials. Okay. Uh, river blindness is actually caused by a worm. That's a helmet disease. This is uh, endemic to more um, uh, hotter environments. Okay, and these are uh, transmitted by uh, black flies, okay. Uh, and when you have a black fly attack, then it's sort of a swarm, so that can cause many, many bites. Uh, and the adult females will then give rise to uh, uh, helminths, okay which migrate through the bloodstream and especially into the eyes. And then they will eventually invade the entire eye. This is super, super gross. Um, and that can cause blindness, okay? Uh, the type of, um, uh, the type of helminth is Oncocera uh, vulvavus, um, or excuse me, vulvulus, okay? And it's not the worms itself, but they cause the bacteria. They, are, they, they carry a bacteria called Wolbachia, and that's responsible for the damage. 
Okay, and here, this is, I apologize, this is not pleasant. Okay, but this is what the um, helmet looks like uh, when it infects the eye. The sand fleas, the, or the black flies, do not bite the eye. They just bite the skin, and then the worms will migrate to the eye. Okay, and here's a, more of a culture of the helmet. Okay, so this is a biological vector carried by black flies. Okay, the active agent is Wolbachia, which is the bacteria that's associated with the helmet. Okay, and you actually do this by diagnosing uh, visually just finding the helmets themselves. And there is a treatment, it is an anti helminth uh, called Invermectin. And there are many, many cases um, just because of the prevalence of black flies in sub-Saharan Africa, Central and South America. Okay, and that concludes chapter 18 on infectious disease of the skin in the eyes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to conclude this video lecture, which let's see how long it lasted. Okay, so only about 21 minutes. So the next video lecture, when we move on, uh, to chapter 21 will be uh, uh, probably an hour, uh, maybe a little less, and I will get this posted right away.